Дмитрий Анатольевич Медведев, Russia's third president, used to be a gulp of fresh air. He used to be what we, regular Russians, always wanted a president of our country to be. He was a symbol of good changes that Russia was going through. He was a ray of light. He was hope. Um, but that's the thing of the past now. Dmitry Medvedev has recently changed a great, great deal. Um, I think you all heard his recent sayings. They are very strange. Really hard to hear a former president of Russia, any country really, say things like that. So full of hate, so uh, lack of common sense, you know. His sayings, his speeches, they don't paint an impression of a nice, sober man. And um, I was thinking of Medvedev as he made his last statement. I'll, that's actually quite an unbelievable statement. You know, I'll, uh, you've got to hear that. I will quote him towards the end of the stream. Um, when I was thinking of his last statement yesterday, a, a bolt of lightning hit me. Dmitry Medvedev has changed exactly the same way that Russia as a country has changed. Medvedev is the embodiment of Russia's changes, degradation, the showcase, really. And in this live stream, I'd like to tell you my story of how life of Dmitry Medvedev symbolizes and reflects the transformation of Russia. The way I see it. Howdy, howdy, everyone. My name is Konstantin. Welcome to Inside Russia, where I give you news updates that I find important, and I think that truly explain what happening, what's happening in Russia today. What you will not find on this channel is lies, propaganda, and BS. But you, what you will find, common sense, truth, and logic, and some emotions. Quite a few emotions, because I am a human being. Inside Russia is where usual Russia, explained by the unusual Russian, for the first 30 minutes or so, I give you my daily message, and then I invite everyone to carry on to live stream chat, where we converse, and I try to answer as many questions as possible. I'd love that very much. Thank you so much for coming, all of you. Thank you for giving me another chance. And um, let's talk about Dmitry Medvedev, transformations and life in Russia in general. You know, folks, sit down, lay back, relax, get some popcorn. What you're about to hear from me, you will not find and hear anywhere else. Let's go. In the past, I made three streams about Dmitry Medvedev. For one simple reason, he simply gave so much to talk about. He is the new maker. No, the newsmaker, newsmaker. He has uh, erupted with so much hateful content. It's actually quite unbelievable. And he's a very powerful Russian politician still. So his words are to be taken seriously. So my streams, I made three of them. They were mostly about what Dmitry Medvedev said, his statements and uh, his attitude towards the West. He summed up 2022 in a very strange way that uh, when I was quoting him, I made the first stream about Dmitry Medvedev, I was quoting him. I, I actually was laughing so hard. Um, he immediately came out with another set of interesting information, interesting predictions for 2023. And uh, I laughed even harder. I mean, you all remember the streams. I was laughing so hard. It's probably the hardest laugh of my life. Then he came out with statement that 
was not laughing matter at all that um, he proposed well you're saying that russians who left are traitors no good bombs and scumbags who left russia and um, he proposed uh, that traitors who left Russia needed to be stripped of their citizenship, Russian citizenship, not to be led back into Russia and executed or killed. Uh, I wasn't laughing about that. Again, he's a powerful politician. His words are to be, to be taken seriously. Uh, you can go back and watch my streams. About four months ago, I made them. Uh, early January of 2022, late late December, I think. You know, ever since then, Medvedev came out with crazy statements regularly, every single week. The only reason I did not make streams about him anymore was that um, then he'd be in my streams all the time and it would get boring. You know, it would get old, but... Hearing what he said yesterday, a little bit later on that, I looked at this whole thing of his existence um, at a little different angle. I look at him and compare his degradation, and he's been degradating, obviously, as a politician and a public person. Uh, I've compared, I compare his de personal degradation, you know, like political degradation, to degradation of my country. Both processes are very similar, actually. Well, before we go any further, I'd like to tell you the story of Dmitry Medvedev, the way I know it. Dmitry Medvedev was born in 1965 in Leningrad, now it's St. Petersburg. And he is an attorney, graduated from Leningrad State University, law department, law school. He was an outgoing student, excelled in academics, was very active, was smart, worked out with heavyweights, liked Western rock music. His favorite um, rock bands were Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, and Led Zeppelin. He was a great guy overall. People have fond memories of him. And not just politicians, but people he like his class schoolmates, you know, alumni of uh, Leningrad State University. Have they have no reason to lie? So they have fond memories of him. And in 1988, he became a professor of law and started teaching law at his alma mater, Leningrad State University. Students loved him. He was liberal. Uh, the West oriented and in late USSR it was very unusual. It was a gulp of fresh air. It was very, very rare. Um, again, students loved him. In 1990, a key event happened in his life. He got a job at the Leningrad Mayorate. The mayor was uh, Anatoly Sapchak. Um, he started working as an employee of Mayor's Committee for Foreign Affairs. And the committee was headed by Vladimir Putin. In 1991, there was a scandal that, uh, with involvement of Vladimir Putin. Putin was charged with a wrongdoing by, by his fellow colleagues, um, city representatives. An investigation was conducted headed by Marina Solier, very famous investigation, you can Google, look it up. Uh, she was a representative, an activist, a politician, people's person, and the results were um, not favorable to Putin. He, uh, a motion to the mayor was sent to fire Vladimir Putin, and uh, the documents were sent to Attorney General's office, for criminal investigation. Vladimir Putin had two attorneys um, that were defending him, his legal counsels, so to speak. And the lead attorney's name that was helping in buff of Solier investigation was none other than 
Dmitry Anatolievich Medvedev. That case solidified two men's friendship in until today, that's over 30 years now. They remain close friends. We all know of Putin's career. I, you know, <laughs> go and watch my stream called uh, Who is Vladimir Putin, big man in small chair? I, you know, zero in on his career. So we all know what happened to Putin. And Dmitry Medvedev has always been right next to Vladimir Putin. And he's even next to Vladimir Putin right now. He's been uh, in the very inner circle, the very trusted man, one of the very few, you know, men that Putin could trust with pro probably everything. No, actually, Putin trusted so much, trusted Vladimir Medvedev so much that he allowed Dmitry Medvedev to replace him as the president. He basically gave the gift of power of Russian presidency to Dmitry Medvedev. Uh, and trust me, that's huge. In Russia, that's huge. And for Vladimir Putin, as we know now, how he hangs on to power, that's double huge. Medvedev's career had been, well, uninteresting until he became the third president of Russia. And that's when it got interesting. I will zero in and I will tell you more details about that period. Most likely you don't know much about that. Uh, from 2008 to 2012, four years. When Putin was the president first two terms, the clouds started thickening over Russia especially towards the end of the, his second term. I'm not even talking about the start of his crusade on the free press, the arrest of Mikhail Khodorkovsky. Those, those things were on, for, on surface. Everyone, the public, could see them. Uh, they were public discussions and so forth. But what was much more serious and much more sinister was going on behind the curtains, not seen by the public much. And that was the rise of Silaviki. Silaviki in Russian are the power agencies, KGB, Federal Police, Attorney General Office, State Prosecutors, Internal Revenue Service, you know, um, State, uh, State Police Department and so forth. Um, Silaviki, the power people, the power agencies, they ruled everything in the USSR. They were the oppression machine. Um, they were keeping people low. And then in 1991, Silaviki were stripped of power over people. And, you know, basically they did, they did not have power for 11, 11 years. That's why Russia enjoyed freedom years in the 90s, you know. Because there was no abuse of power by Silaviki, they, they had very little power. But in 2001, 2002, people started giving power to Silaviki back. The rise of Silaviki started happening. Regular people, they did not feel it. For them, life was as usual. But I returned to Russia in 2004... And I remember, I felt it. We in business, in large corporations, felt it very well. Um, the Silaviki did not go after regular people much, uh, so people didn't notice. But Silaviki started using their newly gained power to pressure business, big companies, to extort money, to blackmail. They started developing the disease of abusing their power to make money, to extort businesses, to blackmail, to misuse the law, and etc. You know, things like that. At first, it wasn't much, but it was developing fast. In front of my eyes, I was the witness, and I saw it. I remember how we dealt with Internal Revenue Service. Uh, they became 
um, bolder and every single quarter they demanded something new and things they demanded were not according to the law you know what i mean um there are so many stories about that but anyway i was the witness i saw it developing it was like this they would start they would try something and they would feel like they get away with it then they would try something more and more and they got away with it and got away with it and this is how they were rising okay so putin's two terms this new Silaviki system called the vertical of power was being born from 2000 to 2008 and that was when dmitry medvedev replaced vladimir putin I told you about Silaviki so much because that's important. We started feeling the difference right away when Dmitry Medvedev became the president. I call that the thaw. The ice started melting. The gulp of fresh air. That's who Medvedev was for us. For me. He was liberal in a good way. He still was the, that great young law professor from Leningrad State University that students loved. Uh, first thing he did when he became the president, he brought his team along with him and he replaced key people in the government. He started putting tabs on Silaviki generals. He was firing them left and right. I remember on one occasion he fired 17 generals, very powerful generals of KGB and um, state, the federal police, for abuse of power. Unheard when Vladimir Putin was the president. He forbade internal revenue services to go after businesses. And they did go after businesses. You open your company and boom, right away you get audited. They could audit you as often as they wanted, as many times as they wanted. Uh, when Medvedev came in, he forbade that. He made a new policy. For the first two years, uh, uh, Internal Revenue Service could not touch you, and then they could do an audit not more often than once in two years, which to us was huge because Internal Revenue Service started looking like mafia they would just come in and do audits and extort money and they would openly say hey you know what if you don't pay us such and such we'll come back next month and the next month and we'll disturb your business because once they're doing uh like grand audit really disturbing the business in russia at least so he started lowering taxes he started introducing state institutions that safeguarded businesses from Silaviki, okay, he started establishing positions of, uh, in Russia it's called abudsmen, okay, that's a person who uh, is, well, appointed by the president, and he keeps tabs on certain uh, law enforcement agencies, Silaviki, basically, okay. Uh, he gave us hope that Russia will develop into a civilized country. The rule, uh, he gave us hope that the rule of law will prevail. The lawlessness of Siloviki would become a thing of past. That Russia actually was immune against bad people and bad changes. You see, with Putin, the bad changes started and the bad people you know, KGB, and they started gaining strength. And we all understood that. But Medvedev came, and he changed that. And we were like, wow, we actually can change that. You know, we can steer our country into the right direction, despite that it, you know, gets set off by some forces. But we can get it back, okay? He was the guy leading Russia into the bright future. He was hope and he was the ray of light. The story continues like that. Dmitry Medvedev 
most likely that's my rumors it's rumors and that's just my um thoughts it's not the fact okay it's easy to assume that Dmitry Medvedev was made the president by Vladimir Putin with a goal to pause for four years and then come back for two more terms. It's easy to assume. And I think that the deal was made in 2007, 2006, I don't know. But Dmitry Medvedev actually got the taste of power. And the rumors have it. He was going, there are numerous, numerous witnesses uh, have come out and said that. He actually gained political weight and he gained independence. And he was about to announce, there was a fight between him, struggle, not a fight, but struggle between him and Vladimir Putin in the six months before the elections. I clearly remember that. I was reading the articles and it was like a show for us. You know, we, we were um, reading that in Russia. Like every day, read it uh, about what was developing. And that, Dmitry Medvedev was going to announce that he was running for the second term. And there was a huge rally. And his people, all his people were there. And then he came out and said, you know what? I endorse Vladimir Putin, I will not run. And everyone was like, what? The entire huge concert hall of, you know, tens of thousands of people. Because that's what they gathered for, to hear them say, I will, you know, go for the second term. The rumors have it that he got a telephone call from someone and he made, he was made an offer he couldn't refuse. Um, I cannot judge him for that because, you know, I'm not a judge. But I figured he was sad that something would happen to him, probably, most likely. I don't know, but I just can assume. Uh, he was made an offer he couldn't refuse, and he did not refuse. After that, his degradation began. Uh, again, in this stream, I'm in no way judging the guy. As he did good for my country, he did good for me. His story is complicated, but he's not, again, he's not judged by me. Uh, after he endorsed Vladimir Putin, all of a sudden, he started becoming rich man. The rumors have it that there are quite a few companies affiliated with him. He got ownership during that time. Uh, companies like Mirator, Peak, Gazprom, and many others. Uh, well, if you give up presidential president's job, you compensation should be very adequate, right? He got the job of the prime minister of Russia, man number two in theory, but I can't recall what he did at the job for 10 years. Not much. He was just a body in the chair. He did not make any decisions, um, and I think it was made on purpose because he was the president at one point. He was the heavyweight, you know, but um, he was just given a position, you know what I mean? He was not seen by public much, and then uh, it, he was replaced right before COVID started. He was made man number three in Russia, head of uh, deputy of Security Council, which still, he's a very serious politician. And then the war happened. And then when he turned into monster. Evil, evil West bashing monster, threatening the West with nuclear missile strikes, making ridiculous predictions, going after Russians, or going after me who left Russia, threatening them with... Um, Stripping their Russian citizenship, not allowing them to come back to Russia in executing them. Uh, killing everyone who's criticizing Russian government. And his last statement yesterday was absolutely atrocious. I quote Dmitry Medvedev. 
what he said yesterday. It is possible to treat nuclear weapons themselves in, a diff in different ways and weapons in general, but nevertheless, we understand that in modern world, nuclear weapons for our country have the value of the very bond that glues the state. Nuclear bomb as Russia's main ideology, the most important of idea of Russia, Skrepa, this is the lowest of the low from Dmitry Medvedev. You know, what he said, he said for himself, I am also Russian. I am same Russian as Dmitry Medvedev, I'm also a citizen. And to me, that is not true. This is not what glues Russia, uh, and this is not Russian ideology, at least for me, you know. I don't want to be associated with that statement, and I don't want to be associated with him. Uh, just know that many Russians have very different opinion of that. But again, looking back at his statements, again, rumors have it, uh, this is not a fact, but the rumors have it, that once he quit his job, well, he didn't go for the second term, he amassed a huge fortune, uh, people who were associated with him, and he started moving his wealth to the United States because he was very fond of the United States. When he was a president, he did wonderful things. Um, cooperation between Russia and the United States flourished in his years, and uh, I think he loved the country. So he sent his son, his son, uh, rumors have it, he either had a residency, American residency, or American citizenship. Again, I don't know. Rumors have it. And um, he, by proxy, through his son or other people, owned tons of assets in the USA, in the East Coast. Uh, he owned a chain of gas stations, a chain of supermarkets, and, you know, other big, big assets. And then after the war started, and he supported it, obviously, you know, he became the enemy of America and uh, of Ukraine, really. And then America supported it. And he, his son was uh, given an ultimatum to leave the United States in 48 hours. Otherwise, he'd be arrested and deported. And Dmitry Medvedev's assets were confiscated. And boy, stinky substance hit the fan with Medvedev. He started insulting America like you had never seen before. I think that's uh, two and two. You know, one event led to another one. But again, these are just rumors. I don't know for sure. Don't quote me on that. Again, I'm not here to judge Dmitry Medvedev, although he said atrocious things and he threatened us who are in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, my friends, members of Tashkent Breakfast Club. Uh, personally, he threatened to kill us, okay, to execute because we criticize Russian government. I'm not to judge him because I remember that guy back in 2008. Um... I see that his degradation is the same as the degradation of my country. Very similar pathways. He was decent, and Russia was decent. He had challenges, Russia had challenges, and he actually started coming on top, and Russia did as well in 2000s. And um, after that... After certain events, the hell broke loose for both Dmitry Medvedev and for Russia. Um, very similar pathways. But to finish up the stream, I'd like to appeal to Dmitry Medvedev. If I were to see him personally, I would like to ask him questions. The biggest question would be, I would ask him, Dmitry, what happened to you? What happened to the law professor, full of energy and full of desires to change the world, 
back in the late USSR in the uh, late 80s. What happened to that professor whose students loved? Um, what happened to the guy who took a huge weight on his shoulders to become the president of Russia? That's not an easy job. You know, that's huge weight, huge responsibility. But the person took it and started making changes to the better, okay? One of the very few leaders who did that. Uh, what, happened, what happened to that guy inside of you? What happened to the guy who toured Silicon Valley and he was fascinated? What happened to the guy who came to Apple's office and um, got a tour of Apple directly from Steve Jobs and made friends with Steve Jobs? And, you know, what happened to that guy? What happened to the guy who invited uh, rock and roll stars over to his place and had drinks with them and had a good time and it was televised. Um, what happened to the guy who personally invited then governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and asked him to advise on what to do in Russia so Russia would develop more? What, what, what happened to that guy? I still feel that man is still inside Dmitry Medvedev, somewhere deep, deep inside. Unfortunately, he felt the victim of power, absolute power, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, as we know. Perhaps it's been right next to Vladimir Putin, perhaps it's uh, the weight of the presidency was, or prime ministry was too heavy, perhaps temptations were plentiful, I don't know. But I still believe that uh, that guy, the good Medvedev, is somewhere still deep, deep inside. And I would really like to see him come out and actually do something for the better for once. Thank you so very much. That has been my message. I hope you liked it. I hope you found something interesting and valuable. I would like to comment on that in the live stream chat. I'm about to turn it on. And as I am turning it on, I'm asking you to help me out, to help spread my message by making reposts on social media accounts. That helps a lot. Also, would you please consider joining my Telegram channel called Inside Constantine's Russia? The link will be in the description below. If you liked what you just heard, would you please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, perhaps buying me a coffee would also be nice. <laughs> Very appreciated. Turning on the chat right now and please carry on. Let's converse and talk. That's my most favorite part of the streams. I really like to share what I think of the current situation in Russia, but when I turn on the live stream chats and I see that so many people pop up immediately and the usual suspects, that, that just, it's magic. Probably the high of every day that I have right now, just about now. Thank you so much. Definitely makes me feel I'm not alone in this. Um, I feel support. I feel love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lorna and mommy, uh, you're always number one. Harry, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you could make it. You know, I'm glad everything worked out. Blackhead, Amir and Bob S. Howdy, howdy, everyone. The mods, we have the best and the most wonderful, the, the most fair and strongest mods in the entire universe, by the way, if you're here for the first time. And the usual suspects, thank you. Great to see you here. Dirk actually takes the top spot today. Pretty cool. Anyway, um, friends, great to see you. Um, if you want me to notice your messages, please put them in caps. And put inside Russia after ad sign. So 
the message would appear highlighted in orange and I would just see it right away. That helps me a lot. Just like Mr. Kaliskin did, saying howdy from Chicago. If I saw Medvedev on the street, my question would be what the fudge? Well, thank you uh, for sharing. I told you what my questions would be. You know, Medvedev was so great when he first became the president. He was the man of people. He's an avid skier. Well, at least he was. And he was a photographer, amateur photographer. And uh, I remember he would be skiing like a regular person with bodyguards, of course, with secret service agents. On uh, Rosa Hutter, uh, the future place of Sochi Olympics, and people would be actually filming and skiing towards him next to a chairlift and, you know, coming right next to him and asking, Vla, Dmitry Anatolyevich, would you please autograph my uh, ski lift ticket, you know? And he would. He would take a pen and, you know, smile and sign it. And uh, I remember one guy on the Red Square would came to him and said, and before the Red Square was off to photographers, I mean, come on, 2007, right? So the Red Square was off to photographers, and one guy was also filming, like with a small camera. He came and said, Dmitry Anatolyevich, you're a photographer. I'm also a photographer. Please tell the KGB, tell the Secret Service to get their hands off the Red Square and allow us to photograph. There's nothing secret here. And Dmitry Medvedev looked at him and said, you know what, you're right. You're right, I'll do that. And he did. Within a couple months, that ban on photography, professional photography in the Red Square was lifted. That who was Dmitry Medvedev was, you know. What the what happened to him? I think that's a personal tragedy. Ellen, howdy howdy, Roger Williams. Dave Strains behind the chair. <laughs> Insignificant satellite company. You remember that? <laughs> I think that's gonna that's gonna stick with uh, Medvedev forever. You know, his statements—they're so crazy. They looked like statements of not sober men. You know. Crusader Damien is back with the most thought-provoking questions. Thank you for your support. I'm trying to understand why we shouldn't judge that psychotic megalomaniac who threatens to nuke us every other day. We have had good and not so good leaders in the West, but nothing on his level. Uh, for one simple reason. I said I am not to judge him. You can judge whatever you want. Um, you saw my streams. I was absolutely furious about the guy. Well, I still am furious about what he said. But I was thinking before the stream, and uh, the God said, do not judge and you will not be judged. And this is basically kind of like mellowed down inside. Uh, he, he's a mem he has turned into psychotic me megalomaniac that there's no question about that just look what he said yesterday that's absolutely it. like i said it's the lowest of the lowest um the more he talks the more i understand that he has no real power whatsoever and all he has left is talk okay um uh, but there must be that good Medvedev somewhere deep, deep inside. But you know what? I'm afraid that Medvedev is, is go like, it's not salvageable. He will never come out. This bad Medvedev has taken over completely. Stout Shako. Hello, long time lurker. lurker. Howdy, howdy. Thank you for, you know, coming out onto the light so to speak. Please pray for the cousin of a family friend, Matthias. Okay, hang on. He was kidnapped and is being held for ransom. Wow. Holy moly. Uh, 
Uh, Matthias. I'm sorry to hear that. I put him on the prayers list. We'll definitely pray for him. The highwayman. Um, by the way, I meant to ask you um, in a few streams in a row, are you feeling any better? I remember you had some troubles of certain kind. Um, we pray for you every man, every day. Do you feel any better? Please let us know. Brother Randall, howdy, howdy. Sam K, Constantine, wonderful mods. Linda, Pamela J, howdy. Mario from Croatia. Harvatia, Ann Larson. By the way, Damien, out of all people, I should be judging, you know, him the most because he threatened to kill me personally, a Russian who fled Russia and criticizing Russian government. Okay, so uh, he's threatened me the most, along with my other fellow Russians who are here. George, Roberti, that's how you make me feel too. Um, not sure how I'm... Curd Bulls, um, it's my birthday. Well, this is fantastic. Uh, 26, 25th of April, 26 here in Tashkent already because it's past midnight. But I think it's um, time to sing you a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kurt. Happy birthday to you. Many happy returns of the day. Uh, have a fantastic holiday and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you for being here with us. Ferrari guy, I'll say it again, as I think of Medvedev, Lavrov, etc. That scene in Temple of Doom, when the prisoners were zombified by drinking the crazy juice, blood from the cup. Not just Medvedev, Lavrov, uh, good, good part of Russia, the populace of Russia, you know. Very good comparison, by the way. I never heard you say that, I must have... Uh, must have overlooked. Just Terry, thank you so much. Yurei Kwok. Howdy, howdy. Um, Medvedev is, is gone. I have a feeling, well, there are two things possible. First of all, he's not ever sober. Okay, that's that would explain a lot. And then the second is... He's been isolated from his Twitter account and someone else makes account like statements acting as him uh, could be the revenge of Putin for Medvedev attempting to go for the second term, something like that. You know, that's also a possibility. David Porter, howdy, howdy. Hope all is well in Chernovtsi. We keep on praying for you every single day. Thank you so much for coming. Tamash Miklos, thank you for huge support. I appreciate it. Please keep up the tremendously valuable work. I strongly believe that the end of the war is coming soon. Me too. I have a feeling. And in a favorable way to the free world. You know what? Me too. Uh, makes two of us. Uh, thank you so much for your huge support. And it's not the first time I, I know. Um, I remember. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Greg Lewis from the UK. Hello. It's getting hot. Especially when you drink hot tea. 
drinking uh, Twining's English breakfast at midnight. Pretty strong, flavorful tea. I like it very much. This, along with Yorkshire Gold, is my favorite. So, cheers to all of you raising this teacup. Ah, oh, it's good. Snow White, not a joke. If he keeps up the th threats, he's walking down the road to terrorist designation. Noted. He's way past that line. He's, I mean, he's not walking down that road if he keeps making. He's made enough already. At least in my opinion, you know. Mattia Petek. Uh, what do you think how this will end for Russia? <laughs> Not good. And who will profit the most when this madness ends? That I can't tell. China will definitely, most definitely will benefit. Uh, other than that, Russia obviously will not benefit. The United States uh, and Europe most likely will not benefit because I think America and Europe would rather have Russia as a very strong ally and a partner rather than a failed state. Um, China is next door. China is going to be vacuuming everything. He's going to be taking Russian land, uh, denounce those treaties were signed 170 years ago. Um, Manchuria will go back to China. Uh, and that's, it's going to be a mess. Paul Bins. Hey, Paul, I have a question to you. We keep on praying for you. Is it still necessary or I can take you off the list? Ken Harris. Uh, how can that man be sane deep inside when he acts insane? His voice speaks his truth. Much love to you for your daily chat. Well, Ken, you know, uh, this is the feeling I had. It's really hard to explain, but I remembered the good Medvedev. And he still must be deep inside someplace. Is there a possibility he's completely gone? I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps. I mean, I don't know personally, Dmitry Medvedev. But I keep on, I keep on um, recalling those people who had very fond, a high opinion of him when he was the professor, young professor, when he was a student at Leningrad State University. Well, clearly it was a different man, you know. Um, but he certainly has been acting insane in the past 14 months. That's, there's no question about that. <laughs> That's a bold statement. <laughs> Lorna, hey, girlfriend. <laughs> Tom W. Need a food pun for Medvedev. I've got Vladimir Sa Sa Savaloy. Vladimir Savaloy, Margarine Piganian, Igor I know suggestions like that. I'm not good at making that stuff, you know. I'm sorry. John Mayer, thank you so much for your support. No message, but this is a pretty clear and loud message. Angie Madcat, howdy. We have the Batsemann in Germany too. Batsemann. The heck is that? There's even a children's song about him, and where he comes, it's never a good thing. You suggesting that's Medvedev? Batsman. Well, hard to disagree with you, you know. Dave Strains, thank you so much. Sam M. Howdy, howdy. Sending love to Chicago. 
the Windy City. Um, BTification, what happens when become friends with Putin? Nothing good happens. Well, you certainly become rich. That's one thing. But you know what? I'm thinking of these people who are super rich, who are sitting right now in their palaces, who depend on Putin, and they must be drink, must be drinking every single day. Because you sit there and you're an outcast in the entire world. You are wanted by the international criminal courts. Uh, your minutes are being counted. But you're rich. You know, you can fly your planes anywhere inside Russia. <laughs> you cannot fly outside Russia. You can uh, enjoy unlimited power inside Russia again. Uh, but you know, every single one of them knows that the crocodile is coming. And literally, tick-tock, tick-tock can be heard in the air i think i think it's buzzing in their heads and i think they all drink trying to forget about that so that's what happens when you become friends with putin can be f65 thank you great stream today does medvedev ever speak in public is it only in writing that he speaks out he sometimes comes out and does press conferences with some employees and he does that on camera very rarely. Like yesterday, he said this madness about the nuclear weapon is Russian, that this national idea of Russia, Skrepa. Um, he did it at the press conference, but not publicly, but it was recorded. Okay, He never comes out in public ever. I think the last time he was seen among people was when he was a president. You know, 15 years ago. Bicycle Sunday. Is there really any way to come back after this crazy talk? I don't know. I really, truly don't know. Um, I think there is a chance for salvation for every one of us. Um, but it's a really difficult thing to do and it's a very spiritual thing to do uh, if Medvedev would come out and said you know what, I made mistakes please forgive me I humbly accept um, punishment you know, and I understand what I did and so forth he would come back I don't think he would be forgiven, though, no, by many people. But at least it would be a try on his part, if you know what I mean. Bobby White, you should go to local ad ag agencies and offer you international outreach. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. Uh, Jason Carney, thank you for coming back and supporting huge again. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your support, daily support. You're uh, the champion of supporting. Thank you. Frank in Texas. Howdy, friend. L. Bailey. Sorry, but the potentially different view of Medvedev don't help much if power comes from the center and there are no other, no other bases of power such as real political parties. It wouldn't make any difference if he would, you know, uh, have a different view. But it was, I think it would be just good for him, personally. Now, friends, continue the speaking about Medvedev. What I think is going to happen soon is... There will be a change of power. And as soon as Putin out of the Kremlin, and it will happen one way or another, and it doesn't matter how, okay, but he's out of the Kremlin, all these people will turn around and start saying, oh my gosh, 
we were forced. We didn't know. Oh, we, you know, we were blackmailed. Oh, we just learned there are no Nazis in Ukraine. How could we do that to Ukraine if we knew that there would be no Nazis? But he lied to us and they would be blaming Putin. There would be such a huge blame game. I think at this point, Medvedev won't be able to turn his side because he's gone too far, you know. But uh, everyone, including propaganda people, oh, they will be doing master, trying at least to do masterful job to, you know, clear themselves uh, of the dirt they've uh, been swimming at in the past 14 months. Black Cat, thank you so much for gifting membership to five people. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, something interesting from Sam K. I haven't got wireless sharpest keyboard. It's got rounded edges. Is that also okay? That's fine with me. Dean, Jaren, Medvedev doesn't look happy and doesn't deserve to be. He didn't stop Putin and look what we will have now. A nightmare. I hope this ends soon. Must end with the Ukrainian victory. Hard to disagree with you. Hands down. He did not stop Putin. He actually played along. Remember I told you that. Ten years followed and he started his degradation. Ten years followed of him being prime minister. He didn't do a thing. He just... He was making himself richer and richer. Okay? And uh, what can you do just when you have number two job in Russia and you don't do anything? Drink? Abuse substances? Whatever. I don't know. But... Um, Dean, you're certainly right. Linda, thank you so much. Just Terry, thank you. Jim Flag, everyone has a prize. Putin must have found Dmitry's button. Yep, he did. A button or two. Thank you, Black Cat, again. Thank you, Mods. Um, Morton, Dmitry Medvedev sounds like a small man who wants to be seen as a big man. I don't, it's really hard to say what he wants now. He just spits out this crazy, crazy statements, ideas. Uh, just crazy. Uh, KG1 news headline in UK today the world is sick and quite probably on the verge of a new world war Medvedev told the conference in Moscow today well that's uh, that's um, that's what I was quoting and he said that uh, nuclear weapons is something that glue Russia together there's national idea there's nothing more important than nuclear weapon Lena, howdy, howdy. Let's take it easy on the mods today. Um, I hope you're taking it easy on the mods because, I mean, why would you take out on the mods? <laughs> Jones Rames, we're still laughing about Texas and Mexico combining after civil war in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was interesting. Not interesting, it was hilarious. It was my number one, you know, uh joke of not joke but it's crazy laughing thing. Could he have the same speech writer as Putin? Theodore, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, Putin is different. Putin just, uh, there are lies in his speeches. 
he doesn't insult like Medvedev. Medvedev just spits out crazy things, plain and simple. What Putin does, Putin is so different. He says, look, we did not attack Ukraine. We tried, we did not start this war. We finished this war. When he personally said on the 24th of February of last year, I pressed the button. I made this decision to attack Ukraine. And now he says, we didn't attack. We didn't start the war. We're trying to finish it. He says in a calm voice, you know, Russian economy is doing great. We have been able to withstand what they have been doing to us. They've been waging a war for no reason. Wait a second. You gave us the reason yourself on the 24th of February saying, hey, I attack Ukraine. I made this decision, you know. Russian troops roll onto Ukraine. They kill Ukrainian soldiers. They kill Ukrainian people. And now he says, you know, they are attacking us financially and economically for no good reason. We are the victims here. That's what Putin does. Okay, and he's a master in that. Dmitry Medvedev turns out to be mastered at, at different things. At American politics, predicting the civil war. Yeah, insignificant satellites. Uh, you know what? I gotta take his phrases. Again, he's, he, he literally comes out with something like that every single week. I gotta keep track of that. Um, Kurt, how do you consider, would you like to be the next president of Russia? No, I would not like to be the next president of Russia. I think by becoming the president, you uh, sell your soul. Um, so I don't... I don't, that's not my cup of tea. Now, this is my cup of tea, quite literally. You see, it says, simply the best dad ever. And guess where this cup of tea comes from? My kids. This is my favorite cup now, forever. And this is the role I'm very happy about in my life. I am simply the best, well... I'm not the best dad ever, you know, but I'm enjoying being the dad. That's my role. And husband, son, and dad. And this is, this is the best. Taco lover. Wow. Long time no see. Howdy, howdy. When Dmitry hits the vodka bottle, someone should take away his Twitter. He says the craziest stuff ever. So angry. <sighs> You see, where it doesn't, two and two is not added together is if he was doing it under uh, influence, drunk or under like substance influence, then he would be making mistakes and his messages would not be so clear. They grammatically and um, like messages are clear. All right. So they're not written by a drunk man. They're written by a sober man. So it must be not him. The rumors have it that he rarely gets sober. You know, I'm thinking right now, if I was Medvedev, imagine you having the... I can't say the best, but the most powerful job in Russia, the, the, the one that gives you most power, because Russia is absolute monarchy, you know, it has a czar, uh, so you have a job of being a czar for four years, and then you have so much money that you cannot spend them at, at, at all, ever, and then you enjoy fame. You fly to different countries and everyone is happy to see you. You knock, well, you don't really knock, but you open Apple's door and everyone 
is happy like the apple's founder takes you and gives you a personal tour um you know they you know you, american governors fly to your home rock stars come and it's pleasure for them to meet you and you have it made you know money fame popularity power and people consider you good and all of a sudden you lose everything you are persona non grata you are wanted by international courts you are cursed by people millions of people uh you cannot your money has been confiscated you cannot fly anywhere outside of russia anymore what would you do <laughs> that's probably one thing is to drink to forget about this reality if you are so weak or so evil that you cannot change it you cannot you stand up and do something about it but you know you just keep on drinking who but anyway taco lover great to see you great great to see you just another soul bought by greed andrew madcat totally agree rachel Rainan. He may have been shown how far he could safely go. He may have been shown. Yeah, that's that's true. Yurai, hello, I'm sending greetings from Insignificance. <laughs> One of the insigni Insignificance. That was, that was gold. Uh, Do you think Dmitry Medvedev is going off the crazy train? Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath. Jeffrey, I think he's off. You know, he's gone. I still have a feeling that he's doing it on purpose. Perhaps, Elsha, I don't know. Does propaganda work that fast? I mean, it reminds me of name calling. Say it enough and you eventually believe it. Linda, as we have seen it in the last time, in the last months, propaganda works like lightning fast. It's hard to believe. It's unpleasant. But that's a harsh reality in Russia. John Mayer, uh, thank you for your support and good question. Why haven't people like Girkin fallen out of the windows yet? He seems to openly mock Putin with impunity. Greetings from Alaska, Russia's next territory. <laughs> uh, if I was in Alaska, I, I was. I'd be, if I was living in Alaska, I would be <laughs> saying something like this. Molon Labe. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, Girkin is a man of mystery to me. Uh, I think he's a dead man walking. He's not going to last for long. Because he's been sentenced to life by the International Court of Hague. Uh, he's responsible for the shooting of civilian plane in Ukraine. And he's basically, he's, he's the man behind this entire war. He, he started Donetsk and Lugansk. He, admittedly open, he admitted openly saying that if it's not for me, Luhansk and Donetsk would be peaceful places. Okay, That's enough to punish the guy. He does seem to, well, he, he doesn't seem to, openly mock Putin. He openly mocks Putin and even curses him, okay? How he have haven't fallen out, fallen out of the window yet? Well, plain and simple. He's made it clear that he's an officer of KGB and uh, he was sent on special missions. And I think he's on special mission right now. Which that mission is, I don't know. I can guess, but that's just my guesses. But he's definitely on a mission. K. 
Karen Greco, Kostya, the only king approved to be ruling, is found in Isaiah 9, 6, 7. Uh, thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Great to hear from you. Indeed. Uh, mommy, we sing. I sing. And I think other people joined me. To Kurt. Thank you for letting me know. Linda, hang on one second. I will put your mom on the list. Uh, oh, your friend, not your mom, my friend Pam. She's in hospice. Sorry to hear that, Pam. Janice Hendrickson, I remember Medvedev from the past, so much promise, but I think he's too far down the Putin rabbit hole to resurface and transform back into the former self. Hey, I'm not saying he will. I'm saying it would be nice for him to at least try to come back to the reality, try to, to, to find salvation for himself, you know. He's... You're, you're right, I have the same opinion. He's too far down the Putin rabbit hole. Mislius, how did Medvedev become rich? Navalny said he took 70 billion rubles, 1 billion euros in bribes. How he declares his wealth? Is it public information? <laughs> you don't know much about Russia, do you? <laughs> it's not public information, it's actually legal uh to not disclose this information now in russia for politicians and bureaucrats yeah just you must disclose only if you're a regular person you know one of the populace but if you are the elite in the upper echelon of power then you don't have to do that uh he does not declare his wealth anyhow he's above that <laughs> uh i don't know about 70 billion rubles in bribes but uh, I think he's worth much more than that. Much more. Uh, how did Medvedev become rich? Well, I told you there are rumors that he was... If you give up your spot in the race to presidency, and then you are acting president, then that move is worth compensating a lot. You know? Or how to say that is... Compensation is great for that, should be great, uh, by people, from people who you give your place to, if you know what I mean. Time's up. Okay, wrapping it up. Old Silver, howdy, howdy. Thank you so much for being a sponsor. Thanks for the message. Diana Smith, first time I heard about Silaviki. Well, Silaviki is the power block in Russia. It's um, a name that unifies, you know, the KGB. Anyway, all agencies with power. With power to control people. That's Silaviki. Uh they are the foundation of the regime. How many people are we talking about? Are they pulling the strength throughout Russia? Yes, they are pulling the strings. They are controlling Russia. They are just have Russia in their hand right here. Um, Silaviki, you see they're making decisions how to crush protests, uh, to make new laws, giving them more and more power. That's Silaviki. How many people are we talking about? Millions? I mean, the, the, the ones who make decisions, I don't know, probably thousands, but uh, the ones who are employed in the agencies, millions and millions. My friends, I'd like to wrap it up today. Um,
I would like to, I'm asking you to join me in prayer. Thank you so very much. Let's pray and let's um, send good wishes. Let's send prayers, uh, good energy, good vibes to people. Name it whatever you like, but please join me. Thank you. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for giving us this day. Thank you for giving roofs over our heads and putting food on our tables. Thank you for surrounding us with people who we love and who love us. Please give us wisdom to keep the skies above our children's heads peaceful and raise our children the way that when they grow adults, become adults, they will make this place a better world. Please help our children, keep them safe and healthy. Dear Lord, please stop the bloodshed in Ukraine. Um, help to, to, for it to be stopped as soon as possible. The country and the people have suffered so much. Um, please reach out and open the eyes of people who are capable of making decision to stop the bloodshed, including Dmitry Medvedev, Russia's former president. Um, touch everyone, shine your heavenly light upon them, uh, have them wake up from the lethargic sleep and understand what they have done so they become terrified and make the right decision to stop the bloodshed. Please help, help everyone in Ukraine who has been affected. Please um, send Ukrainians, every single Ukrainian, an angel, so people are kept from harm's way, away from harm's way. Please help every single Ukrainian answer their prayers and make the wishes come true. That's the best way I know how to ask for help for them. Um, please help my country. Send your strongest angels with sharpest swords led by Saint Michael to get rid of the demons who have hijacked my country. Uh, please have angels come down as soon as possible and clean my country out and run my country after making it good, making it peaceful and making it not feared by anyone. Dear Lord, please help everyone who's traveling, send safe travels. Help everyone who's seeking for asylum, running away from danger, especially families. Please help all Ukrainians who are suffering without heat, uh, electricity, hot water. Please send help their way. Shine your light upon them, please. Um, please help the hungry the homeless, the jobless, the depressed, the sick, uh, the ones who are struggling with their fate, the ones who are have so low self-esteem, please shine your light upon these people and fill their hearts with love and warmth. Have them feel your love and warmth so they feel good about themselves and they stand up and they will have an, one more chance at happiness. Dear Lord, please reach out your hand to all people who have lost themselves. Um, help them to see the light again, your light. I'm asking also for all pregnant women, please, who are trying to make a decision whether to keep their babies or not, 
please reach out and talk to them so every single one makes the right choice dear lord thank you so much for allowing us to come into this awesome community thank you for allowing us to pray thank you for allowing people helping people and making friends with people through uh, this community and through through this live chats um, thank you for helping me sending so many good words and wishes and financial support of the members thank you so very much um, i would like to ask you to help everyone who is praying along or simply watching us pray i would like to um, ask for a few people who need your help <coughs> They are Matthias, um, who is being held hostage right now um, in Ethiopia. Please send your angels and send your help to him and his loved ones. Give strength. Please help Paula McDonald, Pam, <coughs> Rod. Sandra's husband, Greg, Jim and Shirley Hall, Delany and to her two daughters, Ann Larson, her family and daughter Hannah, Florentina, uh, Carolyn Ridenor, Max's family, Patty L, Sherry Morin, CKOC, Brian Wilkes, uh, Amir's uncle Dickie, Liz Dumbrell, Ripted, daughter of Aspen English, Ruth, Paul, Alona and her sons, Susan, uh, Rudy Kaisley, Darla, Bip, Ivan Gershkovich, Santa's Whiskey, um, White Lightning, Liz Dumbrell's grandparents, George Duberty, Dane's Trains, um, I'm sorry, Dave Strains. Wayne, Shirley and Debbie, Jen Allen, Finola, Lars Henriks, Lars Henrik and Lars Henrik's mother, the Highwayman, Essie from the Scottish Isles, Amanda Raidnor, and her roommate, um, Outlander and family, Churis and family, David Porter, his family, wife, daughter, and all people in Chernovtsi, Ukraine, Susan Marshall, Lars, Bula, Lazarus, Boss Simon, Alvin, Alvin's sister, Teresa D., Outlander, uh, Garcia Castellanos, Terry Carter, Joe, and Lee McMahon, Meta Spencer, Deanna and family, Bree's friend, Carolyn, Albina Fell, Michael Yukon, Joel, Life, Karin Vasur, Terry, Pamela J, Daniel Nine, Lindsay, Larry, Yelena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie, Galina, Igor, Karen, Michael Milkiewicz, Marlene, Paul Bins, Richard, Mallory M, Dirk Misler, James Rhodes, Terry, Richard Burris, Angelica at Life, and Scan Family's grandson, Barb, Randolph, Harry's family, Harry's son, Verlinda's niece, Ian James, Doug, Priscilla Michelin, King uh, Nero, Gaby Hyman, Donald, Deborah, Lisa Son, Jade, Kaltenberg, Allison Dave Moyers, Maureen M, and her sister, Mr. Hansen, Kayleen, Matt, Ashley and family, Mr. Dean Spooner and his church called Our Savior Lutheran Church, Lisa Cumrian, Jacob, Adam Oliver, Amy, Treasure, Kyle's wife, Maggie, uh, Vladislav, Sergei from Kharkov, Susie Myler, Gina, Wayfarer, MS Paramedic Liz, Lori's 
Lori Miles' husband, Sherry, Leila, Philip's mother, Thomas Fall and his mother. And I'd like to ask for special children. They are Cadence, Maverick, Sebastian, Coulter, Theo, Madi, Ansley, and um, two-year-old niece of Karin, my sir. Please send recovery, send good health, and give their families strength. Thank you so very much. Also would like to ask for all children who have been affected, in Ukrainian children who have been affected by this terrible tragedy, and Russian children. And I would like to ask for all children who are not feeling well and sick, all of them, please send them recovery. Thank you so much, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, my friends. Uh, another stream. I'm very honored that you have come and listened to me and conversed with me and prayed with me. Thank you so very much. Another message tomorrow. It's going to be a happy day for me. Um, I will share on the details later. But um, it's going to be a good day. Thank you. I would like to say that you are all are awesome. And you absolutely rock. And as usual, before I go, I would like to ask you, everyone, to say along with me. You know what to say, right? Carthago de Landa Est.